Hi guys, uh, I'm Sam and... Hi, I'm Evan. And we are uh, THA. This is going to be our first full-fledged solo film uh, review. Um, we're going to be doing... Sleepaway Camp. What's Sleepaway Camp? Sleepaway Camp is one of those really, really awesome slashers slash thriller movies from the 80s. You know, a lot of people really actually haven't seen it. It's, it's, it's a pure gem. Uh, of its time. It's a film that actually stands even today as, you know, scary, <clears throat> frightful, and probably m the most important of those adjectives, shocking. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you know, he is right. Right from the beginning of this movie, you've got uh, the, the opening credits and the music is just... Great, great music. It really harkens, kind of harkens to a lot of um, Harry Manfredini. You know, a, a lot. Of, I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's 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 a copy or anything, but it definitely you know, puts you in that mindset. It's very intense. You, you know, when you start to watch this film, something crazy is <laughs> that you're going to absolutely have to strap in uh, for for a ride, man, because it it is. It just it starts out from start to finish. It's pretty intense. It's not your typical slasher because you don't know who is the killer really. Uh, I mean, you've got some of these hints that makes it make it seem obvious who the killer is. Yeah. But then you're like, well, maybe not. You know, the the plot of the film, you know, starts out. Uh, with, first of all, it stars a great actress. Uh, Felissa Rose. Felissa Rose, absolutely. <laughs> babe, total babe. Yeah, total babe. <laughs> hot, hot. I mean, I mean, you know, not, I'm not necessarily saying when she was 12 or 13 or anything, but she's a total. Look her up on IMDb, Felissa Rose. <laughs> we had the pleasure of meeting her a couple of years ago. Totally hot. She's um, a very kind woman, and she absolutely. She was very generous to us. She even while we, you know, when we met her, she agreed to stop her line of signatures and walk with us through the convention to go yeah. take a special picture. She was so personable. But anyway, you know, basic kind of plot of the movie. It stars uh, this young girl played by Florissa Floris ah, <laughs> Felissa Rose, Rose. Uh, named um, Angela. Yeah, and. Uh, her and her cousin are going to uh, sleep you know, summer camp, and he's played by Jonathan Tierston, who yeah. uh, his, his name is Ricky, and he he is a foul mouth little guy. He is, he is, he's he's kind of a terror. Uh, he's he's a very uh, you know <clears throat> he's he's made to offset to be kind of a polarity uh, to his cousin Angela, and uh, you know he's it's. Oh, Guys, what you got there, Sam? I will. I will show you how he signed my poster. This is how how vile his character was in the film, and he's a foul mouthed little jerk in that. But I don't know if you can see that or not. Well, maybe the lighting is a little off. Never mind. Well, it says "Eat shit and live." Sam, I am. It does. You cocksucker. Yeah, he called him a, a cocksucker on his poster. It's pretty intense. But <coughs> you know, basically, long story short. After the kids arrive at summer camp, a string of grisly murders begins to happen. Favorite murder in Sleepaway Camp. Favorite murder. Well, <laughs> so obviously there are spoiler alerts uh, in this since we're going to talk about certain things. Um, favorite murder. No! <laughs> you, know, you know, technically that's not a murder. Probably what happens... Maim a maiming. It's a maiming. <laughs> but what happens, it's whatever, it's what happens to the... Uh, is pedophilic a word? <laughs> what happens to the pedof the pedophile cook? <laughs> the pedophilic cook of the summer camp. Let's say he gets his uh uh just desserts. Oh yeah. So, so. yeah, he gets uh, things get really hot with that with that yeah incident. It's gr really good makeup too because basically the guy gets. You know, by an unknown assailant who pulls a chair that he is standing on whilst uh, putting vegetables or something into a very large, very hot pot of boiling water, and it falls all over him. He and grabs he's... it for That's balance. what it is. And yeah. pulls it on top of himself. Yeah, yeah. Very, uh... It's great, intense. Yeah, very intense. Probably the most intense harming of a person on film that I really... Other than maybe RoboCop, <laughs> the most intense harming of, of a person on film that I can really think of. Well, and then there's there's Angela's rival, which is this 
I hear in person she's a really sweet girl, but on film she was a jerk. Yeah. Uh, this is the girl that is constantly teasing Angela because Angela doesn't seem to be maturing at the same rate as yeah. the other girls in camp. So, yeah, so t- tell a little bit about how, how what happens to that girl. Well, she gets what she deserves. She gets, uh... Hi. Is that you? A curling iron shoved in her twat. She does. And now, of course, part of this is the, part of the allure of this is the fact that it is, you know, an 80s film. It's not as graphic as one would think, but the fact that it leaves so much in the imagination and uses, you know, shadows on the wall to sort of illustrate what's going on, I think, it, which I think actually gives it uh, really a much more scarier vibe. I mean, I think that's more frightening. It's a than, real, it's a real horror film. Yeah, it's absolutely. Not, no gimmick. Uh, and believe me when I say there is plenty of shock value in this Absolutely. movie. Uh, you don't need to actually see insertion like something like you know Saw. You know you would see the curling iron go in and uh, yeah, you live you live your whole life dreaming like crap. There's a curling iron. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. That was the great thing about films of that time is that they could use well, maybe not a softer hand, but it was just the fact that so much more was left, you know, to the imagination. They didn't have to show everything, you know. It. I'm gonna, I could ramble about this all night, but I won't. So we'll move on to the next point. Angela's best talent in the film, well, Felissa Rose as a child actress, what do you think was her best ability? To, like, you... She conveyed really well. I think, I think one thing about uh, Felissa Rose in the film and with the character of Angela is this, this character who barely ever spoke, she really had to convey... Uh, a lot of emotion, I think, with her eyes. She was very stoic. She was very stoic, but you could tell, you know, she, she you could tell she was a child who wasn't necessarily catatonic. There was something going on in there. She was meditating, like premeditating a lot of things. Well, that's actually a point I want us to talk about a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, I think you know, part of that is, like I, said, I think she was able to really convey a lot without, without what she... I think probably something that would be really challenging for a child actor or actress would be, hey, here's this part, and by the way, you're going to be mute in it for most of the time. Um, she does a very good job of having these two sides. Because yeah. when she, all of a sudden, when she finally says something, her face lights up. Yeah. And it's almost as if she decides at one point to maybe be normal. But then immediately, right. immediately she is greeted with uh, adversity. As soon as she tries to open up and be normal, sure. here's this bitch that yeah. gets the, the curling on her in the twat, eventually. Yeah. But this this girl kind of takes her down on peg, so... Yeah. <clears throat> so, let's, let's maybe talk about the end of the film. Well, first... Okay, sorry. We didn't really have an agenda to this. We're just kind of... There's a lot of good lines in this movie. A lot of good one-liners. Oh, okay. What do you think is your favorite line in oh, this? Oh, I should have thought about this a little bit more. And this this might be for... For you that have seen Sleepaway Camp, you know about this stuff, so you might get a chuckle. Golly, favorite line in Sleepaway Camp. Ugh. Probably anything by... You know, there's an actress that we, we were going to mention uh, who, who plays the aunt of Angela, who raised her along with her son, Ricky, um, played by Desiree Gould. Basically, anything that comes out of that woman's mouth is, is horror movie gold. Richard, because she's Angela. She's crazier than a rat in a tin shit house. <laughs> it's, 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 so, so she really does deliver that well. But she's completely sweet. She is, yeah. She's, she's, it's almost like... Packed your chips, I believe there's a whole bag. Wasn't that nice of me? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I packed you and your cousin some goodies for the ride up to camp. Wasn't that nice of me? Mm-hmm. Any chips? But, you know, that's, she seems like someone you'd be really kind of afraid to run into on the street at night. But at the same time, yeah, she, she'd go make you, you know, Toll House chocolate chip cookies. Do you think she was actually a man? Who? Richard's aunt. Richard's aunt. No, I don't. Have you ever thought about that? I've never thought about that, but we're, we're, we should say why we're saying that. Well, I, even uh, even the ending of the movie aside... Okay. I wonder. 
I don't. There's some other things that I've wondered, but that one always seemed pretty... She's a woman. I think that can be a flash fact. I, she, I mean, we know she's, she's crazy. Yeah. And she always wanted, you know, a little girl in the house. Yeah. So to, pre- to preface the end of this movie... Yeah, to press point, in case you haven't figured it out already. The very beginning of this movie starts... Spoiler! The very beginning of this movie starts with a boating accident. Mm-hmm. And... Involving a man and his two children. Twins, one of fraternal twins, one who's a boy and one who's a girl. Yeah. And in the boating accident, one dies and one lives. Mm-hmm. And So then later we're introduced to Angela, who lived, and she now lives with her cousin Ricky, and they're getting ready to go to summer camp. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, there's some scenes in the movie yeah. that lead to the confusion yeah. of... But you, you see kind of how how twisted the ant is, really, because you see that she requests something very peculiar of this surviving yeah. child. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, she, you know, she even presses it like, you know, since she's a doctor, she's already done their physicals for summer camp. That way nobody, you know, neither Ricky nor Angela have to submit themselves, you know, for a physical. The reason for that is, uh, in case you haven't figured out already, is it actually turns out that... <laughs> that Angela was the child who died. Uh, the girl. The boy, which I can't remember the boy's original name. Anyway, Peter? Peter. Thank you, Sam. Peter, who was the boy, lived. I mean, we already have a boy, so another one simply would not do. Oh, no, absolutely not. A little girl would be so much nicer, don't you think so, Angela? And he went to go live with his aunt, uh... And Ricky, his his cousin, well, she always wanted a little girl in the house. So sure enough, <laughs> it's time to close the curtains and well, and you know, slap a wig on him. And well, there's there's another element to this twistedness because the the kids that that were in the accident, they were raised essentially oh. by two gay gay men. Yeah, and there is this, that this scene. This is a shocking scene for 1983. Yeah, it was. You know, it can lead to gender confusion, you know, with small children. You've got these kids watching their two dads, essentially. <laughs> yeah. These guys are in bed, like, cuddling, and they're very hairy, and it's really it's, disturbing. Yeah, it's, they were 80s gay, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's acceptable now, but, you know... <laughs> the, 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 the it was like Ted Dancing and Burt Reynolds. <laughs> like, if the, you saw... <laughs> the, kids are, the kids are watching through the door, giggling. Yeah. And, and it, it has this... <laughs> fucked up scene where they, they got the music box playing and like the camera's spinning around yeah. them and the kids are looking at each other like <laughs> you know, yeah. getting ready to touch each somebody other somebody played doctor <laughs> but but you know that that just leads to more like you know the the role of you know Peter the the boy you know he he was transformed into this <laughs> other persona and and which he had to tamp down because because yeah so at the end it's revealed it shows Angela, who's really Peter, and she's got this horrible look on her face, and as it pans out, but she's naked, and you can clearly see that she is male. So you realize at the end that... Oh God, she's a boy. Yeah, my God, she's a boy. And it shows that little flashback with the aunt how, you know, she actually got, she actually took custody of Peter, not, not the, not the girl. She uh, chopped her boyfriend's head off. Yeah. Or he. Yeah. Chopped, chopped his boyfriend's head off. So great. Just, and I remember, I actually did not see this film uh, when I was younger. I saw this film about 10 years, 10, 10 or 12 years ago. Um, <clears throat> I, I couldn't. We saw it for the first time together. It was yeah, kind of we did. We did. And the movie ended, and I was like, holy crap. I think we sat in silence for a second, too. We just... did, because, uh, and you know, it was, an, it was you know, it was an old, it's an older film, but it absolutely shocked me. Like, and it the, shocked me to the core. <laughs> the cool thing about Felissa is, she is awesome with the fact that she has a dick. <laughs> yeah, well, she doesn't really have a dick. 
Oh, right. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, you know, in person, she's like, I'm the chick with a dick. You know, she's, yeah. she sells she, it. She's a great... She She's just so cool. Um, so I, I kind of want to ask you a question, kind of what you think. It's really a movie about, you know, taking taking anything having to do with sexual or gender assignment out of it. it it's, of course, a movie about, you know, not knowing maybe, this is what I got, not knowing who you are or you know, or what you're capable of. Do you, do you think that when she, com- she committed these murders, was she, was she, pre- was she really premeditating? Was it another kind of persona that took over? Because I think you can clearly say, especially at the end of the film, when she is discovered, she's not behaving like the Angela that we see in, in everything. Maybe she's acting that way because she's cornered. She's like an animal. I kind of feel but, like her entire time that she was silent, there was something developing there that was very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And when this boy reached out to her and offered her uh, a moment of normality, and it was quick, quickly stamped out by sure. her... As soon as she started to act normal and started talking, it was just stomped on by her peers. And then this boy goes and cheats on her, kisses, kisses the bitch, yeah. kisses yeah. her in the woods, and, and Angela finds that... And she's like, okay. She's already not, you know, dealing with a full deck. Right. So it doesn't take probably a whole lot to push her over the edge. So, you know, immediately, as soon as she started to become normal, it was just crushed. And I think that kind of eliminated that part of her that was willing to be rational and normal. Yeah. But I, mean, I think that's a good take on it. I mean, like I said, you know, this, you see her at the end of the film and she's cornered. I know we're going to have, are, are we going to put some little clips in this or... Yeah, there'll be eclipse. Yeah, so you guys will see what we're talking about. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, well, that's Sleepaway Camp, 1983. Wonderful slasher, original, really original film as far as slashers go, I think. Out of 57 stars, what do you give it? 57 stars? Out of, out of 57 stars. Out of 57 stars, I give it a solid 52? 52 is pretty good. Yeah. Why'd you say 57 stars? <laughs> I've got no friggin' clue. It's seven better than America, bitch. Well, that's, that's true. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd give it, a, out of 57 stars, i give it an A+. Plus. <laughs> i give it a hell yeah. i give it a 53, I think. 53, 54. Just because it's an awesome movie. It's shocking. It's not necessarily scary. I mean, it's no, scary. No, it's fun. It's, it's shocking. A, it's a fun slasher. Shock. Which is what a slasher should be, really. Yeah. yeah. All right. Again, it's uh, THA. Look forward to many more reviews from us. Uh, God bless. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys.